for blue blue aquamarine I trimmed off the piece there was a veil running completely through the stone so I trimmed it and I have a nice little trim piece probably get a I don't know nine ten millimeter round out of it so that was nice instead of grinding it off okay for our trim piece of blue blue aquamarine and we're not we didn't grind down we trimmed it off of the bigger piece I'm gonna dop it up and so the bottom dop I'm gonna put some putty on it and this will help hold the bottom part of the stone which is not flat kind of a point and that'll help hold it in the place while I put the top dop in so for, to start with, I'm going to use an oversized dop that's about the same size as my piece of blue blue aquamarine. And the reason is, is that that'll help center the stone. So the, the more centered the stone is, the less waste I will have in the end. So what I do is I use this big piece, bigger dop, and now I can adjust the stone pretty easily it's pretty easy to see you know to get the center kind of where you want it you look at the slope of the sides if the sides are more steeper they'll be less you know not going to grind as much if they're very okay so once I get the stone pretty well centered where I want it to be with the bigger dop on top then I just remove that dop and put in the smaller dop that I'm going to use when I cut this stone. Push that down and take a look at it. Make sure the stone's kind of where we want it. Make sure it didn't move. It still looks centered. Now we just put a drop of super glue. Push the dop onto the stone. Tighten the top part of the transfer and move the transfer jig as you need to to make sure that super glue on both the stone and a little way up the dop to make sure there's a good a good tight piece of adhesive there and just let that set overnight I'll work on another project and then I'll come back tomorrow and start on our trim piece of blue blue aquamarine all right, this is our piece of, our trim piece, our leftover piece of blue blue aquamarine. And we're going to cut this into a round design called Sun Goddess. This is how Sun Goddess should look from the top and side when we finish cutting and polishing this gemstone. And here is some key information on the Sun Goddess design. I prepared a two-part video where I explain all about the information in gem cutting diagrams like the information shown here. Please refer to those videos for an understanding of this information. You can find the cutting instructions for Sun Goddess in Jeff's book, Editions Number 9, which is available at The Rock Peddler. If anyone knows of other vendors selling Jeff's books, Please let us know in the comments because as far as I know, Gene at The Rock Peddler is the only seller of Jeff's books. All right, I finished with the 1200 diamond grit on a topper and now I'm going to go to the 3000 uh, grit uh, diamond on a bat lap. I've got almost all the problems worked out of this stone except if there's still one chip, one crack along the girdle right there. If I can zoom in on that. Right there. And I'll work that out with the 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap. So this is about as big as this trim piece could be because of the uh, inclusions or cracks, not the inclusions. I may have to make it a tiny bit smaller, but I'm going to try to just uh, bring the pavilion down to take care of that crack. But if not, I'll have to bring the uh, girdle in just a little bit. But we're almost there for sizing the stone. So 3,000 grit diamond on a bat lap. Okay, I finished the pavilion with the 3,000 grit 
diamond on a bat lap. And the issue now is, do I have enough space left for the crown? I want to make sure I have enough space. So the way you do that is you go back to your diagram. And I did a video on how to read a diagram and you could refer to that. So what I look for is the crown to width ratio, the C to W ratio, which for this stone is listed as 0.229. And what you do is you measure, you measure your stone and it's, I've already measured it, but you just measure the width of your stone and it's 7.4 millimeters. So you take the 7.4 millimeters and the crown to width ratio of 0.229 and that equals 1.69 millimeters, which is to say that's how much space I need here. Plus I need enough for the girdle. Well, the girdle, how thick is a girdle is the big debate between generally most uh, cutters will agree it's between three to five point three to point five millimeters some say it's a percentage some say point two some say a little bigger some say it depends on the size of the stone but if you get a hundred cutters in a room the majority of answers are going to be between point three and point five millimeters so it needs to be 1.69 and suppose it's three, that's 1.99. So it needs to be about, we need to have two millimeters of space. And if we don't, we could trim the girdle down one or two, 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters. So I set my caliper at two, and then you just see if there's enough space for your crown. And here's so. I had a little bit of space left over, so things are looking real good. And uh, so I'll go to over the, the girdle with the 3000 grit diamond on bat lap and then polish it and transfer it to the stone so we can cut the upper half of the crown of the stone. And we should be okay. I finished pre-polishing the pavilion of the aquamarine with 3000 uh, grit diamond on a bat lap. Now I'll polish it with, uh, I'm gonna use the dark side lap with uh, cerium oxide. I finished polishing the pavilion of the aquamarine and I used the dark side and this time I instead of using my pound or whole bunch of cerium oxide powder that I have from years and years and years ago and I have a bag full of it I only used the uh, the bat stick the cerium oxide bat stick that you know kind of looks like a giant a big Crayola crayon and I just ran that over the, I put the dark side on a slow bin and uh, ran that over it a few times. And then I used a slow drip of water. I didn't even use the uh, Brother Zachary snake fluid that I have been using with the, uh, the oxides on the dark side lap. This worked great, but I didn't need it. So just I just wanted to keep working with the bat stick till I got it to work. In earlier videos, I'll be explaining that I I'm experimenting with it so this time exclusively the uh, bat stick serum oxide worked fine polished up the pavilion and we're ready to transfer the aquamarine uh, in our transfer jig so I will use uh, the same size uh, top cone shape and in the very bottom I put a piece of modeling clay and that's just to make sure that the I don't want the super glue in the very bottom holding my culet the very pointy part of my stone because in the past I've had it break very rarely but it has happened and I don't want it to happen again so that modeling clay ensures that at the very very bottom of the dot the super glue that's that adheres to the culet of my stone on the other end it's it's secured to modeling clay which will give before the culet. So I just take a very small piece, roll it out, and you know, trim off a tiny piece of that and put it in the bottom of my dot. Again, I've got probably four lifetimes more modeling clay than I will ever use. You just need a little bit, it'll last you forever. That's all I need. 
Okay, just to show you, this is how I focus my camera. Instead of trying to focus on that, I'll, I'll put my finger in there and focus on my fingernail. Finger print to see that I'm in focus. Just That's just one of the ways, because early on when I started doing videos, if you go back and look at the early ones, they're kind of blurry. So I'm tried to get better, but that's just so you know, that's how I do it. So a small stone, I'm gonna put a drop of super glue into the cone in the bottom and push the top into the bottom. I use Loctite 404, which was, is recommended by uh, Altertech as the one to use. Although everybody, every cutter uses something different. I, a lot, they all work is my opinion. I at one time tried Gorilla Glue, super glue, and it was, it didn't work. The stone fell off didn't work so I thought for a long time well that's one that definitely doesn't work until I saw other cutters who use exclusively Gorilla Super Glue and it works fine for them so I don't know all the super glues seem to work I use Loctite 404 I now mark it with the date the month I bought it I keep it in the refrigerator all of that's recommended by uh, by the cutters who use super glue and then I throw it away after a year so that's the tip and again, all the tips I give you, none of them are mine. None of them are things I invented or discovered. It all came from other great cutters who came before me and that I learned from. Fortunately, many of them are still around, still helping newer cutters. They're still available for you. So I don't want you to think these are all my secrets. They came from other experts and I'm passing them on to you. Tighten it up on the transfer jig. And generally, I make sure there's, we well, wanna make sure there's glue on the top and on the stone. I don't want the super glue to run down the girdle of the stone. It'll, it sets very quickly. Uh, Two-part epoxy, I'll spend more time moving the transfer jig around to make sure it sets, that it's touching the top and the stone, but with super glue, it doesn't take very long. So super glue sometimes for smaller stones is what I use. Two-part epoxy I use, I use them both a lot. The third adhesive to use is wax. A lot of cutters, a large percentage of cutters use wax. Uh, it takes a while to learn how. I never learned it, so I tried, but I'm not good with wax. One cutter showed me he uses wax and then he puts a drop of super glue at the end of the wax, which goes to the stone. So it's stone super glue wax even. So, and that helps when you're getting the stone off because wax has a very low temperature where it will melt relative to super glue or two-part epoxy. So those are the three methods. So I'll set the stone aside. I'll leave it overnight. I'll work on another stone and then I'll come back and uh, I'll use my little mini blowtorch to heat up the top top and remove it from the stone. I'll wrap the stone in a piece of tissue paper, wet, so that it tries to help not overheat the stone, but it only takes a second or so to get that, uh, that top off. And then I'll start on the upper half of the stone of the crown. Overall, the design Sun Goddess is a lot of fun to cut. Just be cautious that you don't cut the smaller facets on the upper half of the stone with your rougher dops as you're gonna risk overcutting those facets. Now you may want to just polish them in with your final polish lap. Again, it's a fun design and it looks great. So give it a try. Happy fastening everyone.